Good afternoon. I'm pleased to be here at the uh, ARI conference uh, presenting this paper on the use of ultrafine oxygenated bubbles to mitigate impacts from irrigation water using saline water. I would like to start by thanking uh, uh, ARI for its uh, funding and the California Strawberry Commission for their funding and also for the support of Gaia Water for providing the equipment uh, to help us with this research. Also like to put out a special thanks to Sue Tonic for her dedication to our students and quality of research. Sue is our uh, uh, grants administrator here at Cal Poly. Um, she was helpful in getting me the ability to hire Edgar Godoy to help with the research. Uh, he's one of our students and also uh, Hancock College Community College provided a student. And a shout out to my co-PI, uh, Sarah Kuwahara. So we came up with the idea after running an experiment uh, with water. We were trying to see if we could grow lettuce at 5,000 uh, parts per million salinity, uh, which is basically equivalent to the brackish water in the Arabian Peninsula. Um, and we found we could do that with no problem, especially with the use of the Gaia uh, ultrafine bubbles uh, injected with oxygen. Of course, then you always want to do something more. You, so we increased it to 15,000 and found that, that we were still doing okay. So the yields were down slightly, but not bad. So we went to uh, 20,000. Um, and we're just as a reference, remember seawater is at 32,000. And at 20,000, we did have an impact. The plants are still alive. The Gaia is helping us to keep them still alive, but um, the plants that are shown there on the far right are 30 days old. So we're not really producing a commercial crop, but we are still producing. Um, so uh, we thought about some other crops that we wanted to test and strawberries came to mind. Um, our strawberries are grown in the central coast um, in this area. They're grown in the soil and increasingly in hydroponic facilities, uh, so we wanted to test both of those. Um, a lot of the times they're looking at reverse osmosis, which is over 2,000 an acre foot, which means strawberries are not economically viable. Um, and with increased groundwater pumping, the salt is uh, intruding into our, our water, so the, the salt water kind of lays on top of the fresh water and they, that seems to get mixed and that will impact their uh, the salinity of the water they're using to irrigate with. So we looked at, at the importance of it and you can see here, there's some strawberry growing areas. You can see on the upper right hand photo, that's uh, the um, Ventura area. You can actually see the white uh, plastic from the strawberries that are just being planted and you can see how close they are to the ocean. So you can see how that salinity would be uh, intruding into their groundwater. Um, and Ventura and Monterey counties are hugely important to the strawberry industry. Ventura County is $654 million value of the strawberry crop and in Monterey County it's 686. And again, saltwater intrusion is, is really gonna hurt them. And how does it hurt strawberries? Well, they're very sensitive. So we have 100% yield at uh, 0.7 uh, decisiemens per meter. And that's about just over 700 uh, parts per million and the 50% yield at 1.7, which is about one, about 1,800 parts per million. So at 1,800, we should have been seeing a 50% yield, um, but we didn't. With the Gaia system, uh, we started out with a uh, soil troughs in uh, irrigating the, the strawberry plants with soil troughs and a plastic cover. Um, that seemed to do well. We'll look at the data in a moment from that. And then we went to a hydroponic system. This was done in an NFT. Well, it wasn't actually an NFT. It was a uh, a trough with the coconut core and drip irrigation on every plant. So similar to it, the water would drain off. Um, and then we had soil based channels and looked at those. And for each of these, we did about 3,500 parts per million salinity. Um, and we did them with and without uh, the, the salt and we did them with and without uh, oxygenated bubbles. So what we found was in the soil bins, that uh, the control with the bubbles, we had a 9% higher yield. Um, and that was because the berries were larger. And with the salinity water, we had a 20% decrease in yield actually, and it tied to the, not to the number of berries, but that they were smaller berries. So rather than the large ones that California is always going after, we found that they were smaller, but sweeter 
um, berry. And so they're more like the Asian or Japanese style of berry, a very high quality, smaller, sweeter, but again, the yield was down. So that would be the farmer would have to look at how they would market those. With the hydroponic, um, we found that we did still have an increase in yield with the UFBs, the ultra fine bubbles, but there was no change between with and without the salt being added. And that kind of, um, I mean, with the salt when the bubbles were added, I think that tied back to the, uh, the problem of uh, the fact that, the, that in the coconut core, the water all drains out. And so that impacted the yields because we don't really have the impact of the ultra fine bubbles. The bubbles in the, the troughs uh, with the soil uh, are the water is held against the root at all times. So uh, we've done one round of soil born of soil filled channels and, and that was inconclusive and we're starting another one this, this fall. So um, again, the data is showing that we're, we're getting there that, that the Zeta effect, which is the effect of the nano bubbles and micro ultra fine bubbles adhering to the roots is, is certainly protecting those, those roots. Um, as long as you're in a saturated condition. So again, I'd like to thank ARI, the Strawberry Commission and Gaia for their support. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.